and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about returning ServiceNow ticket URLs using Power Automate. Let's go. All right, so this is another edition of Ask the Audience. And in this case, I did receive a request from iMain. I really hope I pronounced her name right. If not, I really apologize. But she was looking for a way to return end user links or URLs to ServiceNow tickets like a link with the number of the incident itself. So I've actually been curious about this scenario myself and decided it would be worth looking into. And what I found is that there's no direct way to retrieve the URL when creating a ticket, like it's not part of the payload that is actually returned as part of our call or the RESTful API to ServiceNow. However, we can derive a URL based upon the ticket number that is returned. And so that's what we're going to go through in this specific episode. And this is, you know, interesting or useful when creating a ticket for an end user and letting them know that actually, yeah, the ticket was created. Or it could also be situations where you've got some automated monitoring going on from like an IT ops perspective. And you might, you know, wake up in the morning or show up in your Outlook inbox and see that you've got a ticket created. Now, instead of having to like find service now and log in, blah, 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 you can now just go ahead and click on the link and it'll take you directly right into that incident itself. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so just in terms of how to solve this problem, here's an example of our create record action that we're gonna use inside of Power Automate. When we do create an incident, we will have a ticket number returned to us, right? So this is our reference that we typically would give back to an end user. However, it's not overly actionable for them unless they are logged into ServiceNow itself. So what if we could just provide them a complete URL? Now we can go ahead and sort of construct what that URL will look like. And that's what I've got here on the right hand side. So you do need to include your, your um, tenant ID and then you've got the regular servicenow.com URL. And then on top of that, we need to include slash incident.do question mark sysparam underscore query equals number percent 3D and then our ticket number. And now in this case, this is percent 3D is equals, is the equal sign that has been encoded. And so this is kind of essentially our query parameter, hence the need to actually go ahead and encode that URL. So this is something that you can dynamically go ahead and create based upon retrieving this number itself. And then when you actually go ahead and populate this link, uh, and put it into an email or say a Teams message, someone can just go ahead and click on the link itself. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build upon a previous demo. So a few weeks ago, I had created a video that allows us to create a ServiceNow ticket based upon a Teams message. And I'll include a link to that video in the description, but we're gonna build upon that solution. And instead of returning just the ticket number as part of that Teams conversation, we're gonna include a link. And when we click on the link, we're gonna navigate directly over to the ServiceNow incident inside of the ServiceNow web application. So let's go ahead and let's check out that demo. Okay, let's run the demo first and then we'll go into the details and how it was actually built. So as per the previous video, I'm in the context of a Teams message. I wanna go ahead and create a ServiceNow incident. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that button. An adaptive card is gonna show up. We're gonna say that it's a hardware issue. Uh, it's super urgent and my mouse is not working. Let's go ahead, let's click submit. And so at this point, our flow is gonna go get kicked off and we're gonna go ahead and create that ticket inside of ServiceNow. And then what we should see here shortly is a message back from the flow bot indicating that our uh, ticket has been created. And there we go, we see that flow has sent a card. 
and sure enough our ticket has been created and now what we can do is just click on this link now if you're not logged in you still do need to log in but as you can see it does take us directly to the right location our ticket of 16 and sure enough if we do look at our URL we can see that this was essentially what was passed in uh, originally from Flow itself. Now in terms of how this is built, I'm not going to go through all of the previous steps. I would refer back to the video, check out the link in the description for that. But where we've introduced new capabilities and new features is down these last two actions. So what I did introduce was a compose. And as part of that compose action, I am going to include the URL to my instance. So this is my dev sandbox. You will need to put your system in here. This is unique, so don't try to use mine because it's not going to work. Then on top of it, I included this as, as basically just text, hard-coded text. This is the sysparm underscore query equals number percent 3D. And that is just a mandatory part of the URL that we need to include. And then I include the number. So this is the output from our create record action. That's that ticket number I referred to in the slides. Now here, what I've done to make things a little bit cleaner, I've included some Markdown. So Teams does support Markdown and I'll include a link to a cheat sheet for Markdown that'll help you with this. But what I'm doing is basically using square brackets and then just the word link. And so that's what allows me to, to just click on that word inside of the team message itself. Where I can just highlight here and click link. That's essentially what's happening from that perspective. And then I need to use essentially uh, round parentheses and here I'm going to include the outputs from my compose URL. Just so I break it up a little bit, I can show this in a specific step and keep this cleaner. So that's essentially how you would go ahead and include this in your Power Automate workflow. All right, so that concludes another episode. Hope you enjoyed this one and would encourage you to return URLs when creating tickets in ServiceNow. I think that just provides a better user experience. So certainly appreciate uh, the request to go ahead and, and do this. Uh, if you're not uh, subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, likes are always appreciated. Top of that, if you want to follow me on Twitter, go ahead and uh, you can find me at Weirzy. So take care and we'll see you soon. Thanks for checking out this video.